Good evening, I should say. The day's gone too fast. My name is Judy Ferguson. I'm a deacon in our church, the ELCA. I'm at First Lutheran in Beaver Dam, Wisconsin, and everyone is welcome online in house. Once a month, I do what the pastor, Jim Witt, calls a reflection, where I talk for a very short time about things I've been thinking about. Today, I'd like to begin with prayer. <clears throat> Dear life-giving Lord, please give us rest as we need it, help to recognize that need, and boldness to take that rest in spite of all the voices to the contrary. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We live in anxious times. We always have. Over time, meaning over the centuries, man has suffered. War, disease, famine, fire, floods have afflicted countless people. Today we have COVID to add to that list. We live in tension. Well, maybe God got tired of all the cries raised to heaven. Maybe God felt sorry for us. Maybe God thought we were less competent than God had thought. Who knows? Anyway, in an apparent desire to help, God sent Jesus this amazing, powerful, incredible man to change things, to turn these ordinary men's thinking, their warlike behavior, their territorial ways upside down. We watched as Jesus stayed in the temple teaching his elders, shocking his parents, and he was all of 12. He went to a wedding and turned water into wine at his mother's request. He walked down a beach saying to men working on their fishing nets and boats, come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they went. He fed the 5,000. The disciples were afraid of the sea, and he stilled the waters. The woman at the well was afraid as Jesus read her past and knew her, and so on. On the cross, he told his father to forgive them as he was hanging there by nails. <laughs> miracles, miracles. And today we continue to question life. Why is this happening? Who started it? How long will it last? What should we do? Accompanied by nights, sleepless nights and hand, hand wringing. Nothing new. Well, why did the disciples go with Jesus? They trusted him. The point? Jesus knows us humans, and he has such power. The new word today is transparency. We should have no secrets as we are mistrustful of them. The connotation is corruption, cheating, if there isn't transparency. As if Jesus doesn't know that already. He sees all the 
I'll scratch your back if you'll scratch mine behaviors going on across the globe, across faiths, across parties. His behavior says, stop it, trust me. So much stress and pressure we put on ourselves, and for what? One reason is because we're afraid of the war, of any war, the stock market, of a college refusing our child, of an illness of our parent, of just about anything. He wants us to trust him, to rest in him. Jesus helps us recognize that we're not God. We do not know. He gives us rules to live by, asserting that love one another as I have loved you is the ultimate commandment. The work, the effort, the trying is time well spent. And at the end of the day, each day, we may rest hearing Jesus say again, come to me all who are weary and I will give you rest. And he says, my peace I leave to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and be not afraid. And from Matthew 6, we hear these marvelous words. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor about your body, what you shall put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you being anxious can add one cubit to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O men of little faith? Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, what shall we drink, what shall we eat, what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be yours as well. So I give you this marvelous definition of faith. Faith is confidence in God when you don't understand. See the blessing in that? I don't have to be afraid. I'm not in control anyway. God is. We truly can rest in God. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now the Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Amen. 